So I hope you're having a great day, Vapesters. It is colder than a witch's clit up here in the Northwest today. I know it's a lot colder in some places, so grab yourself some hot chocolate or a warm vape, because we got a story time today. So that's right, I'm gonna tell you guys a story about one of the few times in my life I've actually had a manual labor job. Usually I've always worked in restaurants and hotels downtown in Seattle where I grew up. But when I moved over here to the eastern part of the state and bought that piece of property off the grid I was living off of, of course there's not a lot of restaurants or hotels or things like that. So my buddy had been working at Dovex Fruit Shed for a while and always mentioning to me like, man, why don't you just get a job there? I'm like, I don't know nothing about no fucking apple sheds or nothing like that. Never done it. He's like, no, nah, no, it's no big deal, dude. Just tell him that you worked at like Stem Mill for like six months or whatever. Fuck, man, you know, it's all like basic shit. You can pick it up. So finally, I get broke enough or desperate enough, whatever. So I agree, all right. He gets me the appointment, shit. I go in there to meet the manager. Even going in the place, man, it's just completely foreign to me. There's just fucking apples going every which way on conveyor belts and shit. There's big ass fucking tubs of fucking apples being dumped into soapy water. All kinds of walkways over everything. Then up at the top, there's like a big glassed in booth where all the managers and all the shit are where they can just look down and see everything going on, keep an eye on shit. So I go up there, meet with the manager. She's like, oh, Pat told me that you worked with the boxing machine before it's to melt and everything. So I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Trying to go along with it. So she's like, all right, we're going to have you go ahead and start on the box machine because whoever was running it hasn't been here for a week. So she's like, why don't you just go ahead down there and Miguel's going to show you how to do that. And of course, right away, I don't even got a clue what fucking machines the boxing machine. They all look exactly the same. And I can tell, she can tell right away. She's like, yeah, right over there. So I find my way over there and it takes me about maybe a minute or two to realize this fucking Miguel guy, he ain't showing me a goddamn thing. Because I guess, you know, he's been working it for the few days since the guy who usually did it left. And I hadn't really thought about it, but I guess he got plans on staying on that machine. So yeah, he was not happy to see me. As far as I knew, once I got there, man, I'm gonna fucking didn't speak no English. Nothing. Of course, I seen him later speaking fluent English. But anyways, I'm trying to ask him how shit works. Well, within a day or two, it was pretty quick. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. They kind of figured it out. So I ended up getting put on the main line. Basically, the apples come by on a conveyor, and then you've got like three different things. You're supposed to put the big apples on one conveyor, and then the, another size thing here, and then like the bad, bruised, or deformed apples and shit you're supposed to put on another thing so you got like three things going apples going by like crazy and now i'm not making any kind of social commentary about this i'm just relaying the story as it happened factually and it just happened to be that i'm the only white person on that line at all you got some white people in the fruit sheds doing forklifts and doing other things of course all the managers are white but i'm the only guy down there on the actual line sorting apples Really, I'm thinking I'm the only guy, except for maybe one or two others. It's pretty much all Hispanic women. But I didn't think it was that bad. You'd get a little bit dizzy if you stared at that fucking conveyor of apples going by for too long. You'd look up and fucking everything would still be going by. But anyways, I'm having an all right time, kind of trying to talk to the women and shit. Like, hey, how's it going? So we grab this kind of apple and we do this and this. And they're trying to help me out a little bit. But I do kind of notice... That I'm like going about it like this pace and shit. Like, oh, all right, put it up there, do it here. Look next to me. And like the two chicks past me are just fucking going crazy. <laughs> and I can tell my slacker ass is just create like twice as much work for them. So even on the fucking line, I'm like worthless. And then I remember at one point, a manager came over about something had slowed down or they had to shut the line down for a minute. So she's screaming at everybody and yelling at them. And I'm just sitting up there with them all looking at her. And then she's like, all right, now start the line back up. Nobody does shit. They're just all sitting there staring at her. So she looks right at me and goes, tell them to get the line started again. And I'm like, fuck, man, she knows I don't speak no Spanish. <laughs> so I'm like, what the hell are you telling me? But of course, they all speak English. I've been fucking chatting with them the whole time and shit. So I just look at the guy next to me. There was a guy on the line at that point. And I'm like, dude, she wants you to get the line back going again. He fucking just looks me dead in the eye and goes, yeah. We know. And I was like, oh, it's like that. <laughs> okay, I won't say shit then. So yeah, they just give her a couple more minutes and then fucking get the thing going and shit. Just kind of let her know. 
who's actually in charge when it comes right down to it. But that shit was actually fucking hard work, man. I remember this for about a week. We were packing huge boxes, huge, of 10 pound bags of apples. And they would come down on the conveyors and then it was me and this other like fucking 65 year old Hispanic guy, about half my size. And you had to grab two 10 pound bags and then lay them down in the box and then grab two more and lay them reverse and grab two more and you're filling up like a hundred of them in these huge boxes. When they're full, they come by and get them on the pallets. And even fucking that, man, you start getting so tired after a while because there's no you know time to rest or rub the muscles. I mean, you're grabbing two bags. As soon as you come back up, there's two more. You're doing that for four hours until lunch break and then another four hours right after that. So I remember I was getting kind of hella sloppy by the end of the first box. And when I put that big ass lid on, it was kind of like hexagonal shaped. And the fucking apples were stacked up too high. So the box, the lid was like maybe a couple of inches up. But I was like, fuck it. And then my buddy Pat comes by with the pallet and fucking grabs the one box, puts it up on top of the other box, grabs the two of them, and fucking takes them off. About five minutes later, he comes back and he's like, fuck, man, you need to pack them apples better. I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, man, by the time I got that fucking two boxes back to where they were stacking them, he said those fucking apple juice just pour it out the side of that fucking box. And I was like, well, it's only the top, you know, apple or two. And he was like, fuck no, man. That shit's gonna like, you know, domino effect. When you crush the first apple down, it's gonna press on the next one all the way down to the bottom. He's like, that whole box is fucked. But of course he didn't knock me out or nothing. <laughs> and so I felt bad, but what could I do, man? So we're sitting there for a few minutes and the old dude who'd been packing the apples with me, he doesn't really speak English, but he's kind of um, translating to another younger kid there. And so the kids ask me about, you know, what are you doing here and stuff? Um, you know, so I tell them, yeah, you know, I went here, I went to college, I did whatever, I live up, you know, off Badger Mountain, off the grid and shit. And then I notice the old guy say something and they all start laughing. So I'm like, what'd he say? And then the guy's like, oh, nothing. And I'm like, no, man, I don't give a shit. I'm just curious what he say. So he said, well, it's just funny that, you know, he doesn't speak English. He's basically a migrant worker, just came to this country here illegally, don't have fucking no opportunities, don't have nothing. You were born here, fucking went to college, you got parents with decent jobs, grew up middle class, the whole thing, all the fucking opportunities in the world, and yet the two of you guys are fucking doing the same job. <laughs> so I thought about that for a second. I was like, damn, he got a point there, man. That don't, <laughs> that don't say too much for me. But of course, from my thinking, the whole point was I gave up that privilege. You know, the stuff that he didn't have access to, I didn't want access to. That's why I'd moved up on the mountain. That's why I'd, you know, gotten off the grid, done the whole thing. That was going to be my part to not partake anymore on the whole fucking system, you know? So, all right, I'm about to get to the climax of the story now. Just hang on a sec. Let me grab a quick vape. So my buddy Pat gets it hooked up so that after everyone leaves, he's been working late shifts. It's right now we're during harvest season. That's the whole reason I got this job because they're working swing shift right now. So it's not the main real crew, the people who've been working there forever and shit. We're both mostly just temporary workers, stuff like that. Most of them at least got a little experience, not like me. But anyways, there's a bunch of work they're doing after the shift. So he comes by and grabs me one night and says, man, listen, tonight after the shift, you're going to be fucking driving forklifts with them. I'm like, fuck, man, you know I ain't never driven no fucking forklift dude what the fuck so he takes me out back gives me like a five minute crash course man on how to fucking drive those things and shit i kind of you know i got it down pretty good i mean it wasn't second nature but you know i could get it underneath the pallet lift that shit up you know put shit down whatever so i'm actually feeling pretty good about it worked a couple of nights been driving those things around so this is really late one night and shit out to the cold storage and back in and just cleaning up some shit and i'm coming back in and i'll fucking never forget that the janitor crew it was these three little tiny mexican guys who come in every night and they'd work from like 3 a.m until like 6 or 7 fucking spraying the place down mopping doing a bunch of shit so i'd seen them a few times but never talked to them or anything so i just remember i come into the main fruit shed where all the fucking conveyors and everything is all shut down now and it's just these three fucking janitor guys and they've been fucking mopping the floor and i remember it was kind of like some soapy water puddle kind of sitting right in front of them and they're against one of the apple conveyor belts it's like a metal rack actually it was the one with wheels on it the apples themselves didn't go across it but boxes did so boxes would come in and they would slide across all these little metal wheels all the way down 
So I just remember these two guys looking at me, and I'm coming in driving this thing forward. And if you know anything about forklifts, the back wheels are how you steer. They actually drive a lot better when you're driving backwards. Most of the time, you got a load on them, so you're not looking forward. You're going to drive them backwards and be looking over your shoulder. Anyways, they steer easier if you're driving them backwards. If you're driving them forward, then the back fucking steers out from under you. Anyways, I'm coming down this hallway. These motherfuckers are looking at me and looking all fucking shocked and kind of scared, like, what? <laughs> and so I'm thinking, like, what the fuck's their trip, dude? I hadn't realized at the time that fucking forklift tires have, like, no traction whatsoever, man. They're like fucking NASCAR tires or something, just bald, smooth fucking tires. And so, of course, these guys did realize it because they've been around fruit sheds for a long time. So they see me coming and they literally start climbing back up over that metal fucking grate like they think I'm coming right into them. So I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I'm just coming up, go to cut my turn like I, you know, would do because you can cut it pretty sharp with that back tire spinning. Fuck, man, I hit that soapy-ass water, and my ass goes into a fucking tailspin, dude, around and around, man, not even like a fucking 360 or 720, it'd be like the next one, the 1080 or a 13, I don't know what the fuck, dude, I just remember seeing the conveyor belt, Mexican guys, fucking doorway, conveyor belt, the fucking Mexican guy, and man, after about three or four rotations, I slam into this big-ass rack that is like attached to the wall. It's like shelves and shit where they store things. And there's nothing up there right now. But anyways, I nail into this big ass fucking metal beam that's, that's bolted down into the fucking concrete. And I come to a stop, bam! And I'm like, oh, what the hell? But I'm cool. Of course, I look over at those fucking Mexican guys right away and I'm like, fuck, like are they gonna fucking say something? And then I was like, oops, I guess I came in a little too hot. And then they fucking start laughing like, oh, crazy gringo. So I fucking get the forklift backed up and pull it. And when I look down, I happen to notice that the fucking metal, the metal leg of this fucking rack is like bent at the bottom. And the bolts that are going in the concrete have like come up out of the concrete a couple fucking inches, dude. So I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, that's serious shit, dude. So I'm talking with the guys a little bit. Fucking ends up there hella cool, dude. They end up fucking being stoners. So we're smoking a couple bowls and shit. My buddy Pat comes up. I'm like, oh man, you should have seen what happened, dude. He's like, fuck, dude, you don't ever go through puddles and shit with those forklifts or else you gotta be careful. Like even if it's raining out or anything, because he's like, they slide like a motherfucker. But anyways, we all have a good laugh, smoke a bowl and shit. I'm just happy because it looks like they ain't going to narc me out or nothing. Everything's forgotten. Those guys ended up being hella cool. It turned out they had a great hookup for some chronic mota. So yeah, they would bring that in. We'd always be looking forward to them showing up at like 2, 3 in the morning. We didn't have no weed. They're always bringing bowls. But anyways, to finish up this story, so everything turns out good that night. We fucking put everything away, go home. Now, flash forward to about two or three weeks later, I'm working on the line, doing whatever, doing some shit, and I happen to be bringing something across the fruit shed to the other side, back to where I'd come in that night, where those guys were, with the fucking conveyor, where the boxes go, and I noticed that there's like three or four of the big wigs of the company, fucking a couple of the engineers, <laughs> like the CEO guy, and they're all standing right around that rack. So, of course, I'm curious, like, oh, fuck, what are they looking at? Sure enough, dude, they see that fucking thing. I hear one of the engineers going, that's compromising the entire structural integrity of the fucking shelving unit. And those, of course, all kinds of shit stacked up there now. Big ass pallets with boxes and everything. So he's like, you got to get everything off of these fucking shelves right now. You could kind of see, like, they were leaning a little bit, like, towards that leg. That's probably what got someone's attention. was like, what? And he's like, this could kill everybody. <laughs> get that shit off of there. So I'm just like, oh, damn. Fucking hoof it back over to my convention section man i don't know nothing about nothing i'm just bagging it and shit then of course about maybe 45 minutes later my buddy pat comes by and he just looks at me and i just look at him and we know and he's just like you dumb motherfucker he doesn't say it but just with the eyes you know and i'm like yeah i know bitch they ended up replacing the rack and everything it was, i'm sure it cost them like ten thousand dollars but it was fine nobody got killed but i know my ass will put your company out of business if you give me a job i don't know how to do because i'll fucking go ahead and just try to do it <laughs> with no concern for anybody's safety. So I only held that job for probably maybe two and a half, three months at most. And I got at least five more stories 
a fucking shit up around that place. So needless to say, they're not in business anymore, but I do have some great stories. So we got a few more coming up. I got one about me going through the fucking doorway with the forks way up in the air because I forgot to bring them back down after I'd unloaded some shit and the whole fucking, oh, anyway, we'll get, that'll be for next time. So, all right, I hope you guys are having a good one. Let me know if you ever had any experiences like that working in a fruit shed or driving forklifts and ever fucked anything up. Maybe I won't feel as bad. Not that I do anyway. Yeah, all I can say is I had no business driving that forklift to begin with. But all right, guys, thanks for hanging out for a little while. If you're curious what I've been vaping on, this is actually the G320 320 watt mod by Smoke with the TFV8 tank. I just about sucked all the juice out of it during this story time. But I'll take another big hit off of this thing. You can see how great this thing's vaping. I've been hitting it at 125 watts today. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. And then I'll see you guys right back here on the next one. I can say is it's a good thing I wasn't working at Hanford. I would have been like the Homer Simpson of Washington State.